in Doma, I mean, you know, uh, what, what is there to say other than, you know, it would be nice um, uh, to hear a case, you know, it's going to be time, time is going to pass, um, uh, but uh, in terms of, of issues like reciprocity or full faith and credit, sometimes uh, people refer to in terms of whether or not um, one can be married in uh, one state and then move to another it's going to take a while to work out all of the uh, federal regulations and uh, things like uh, Social Security, which may actually have to go through Congress. But um, it, it's quite clear that um, the that progress I I on this front, though long overdue, is um, I is moving with an incredible force. And again, I think you know. I was saying this on the program. I think it's just it's just a function of demographics. I mean, it is just a function of something changed in our culture so dramatically over the past 15, 20 years that um, for generations, uh, younger generations, this this is so the idea that um, uh, same sex couples can't marry is so anachronistic that I think it's just. It, it, it's like um, I, I don't know. It must be like what? Well, Sam, we're we're similar age, you and I, yeah. right? And I think think if we hadn't grown up seeing some of the crap that we'd seen, think if if we'd grown up a little bit later, and you grow up, and all you know, all you're experiencing is Ellen DeGeneres on TV and Will and Grace, I really and you're think being because it. telling stories is always what's important. Is being introduced to real people. And seeing that they're just like you, whether it comes to the you know the abortion argument, that knowing that forty percent of women have had abortions and meeting them and seeing they're just like everybody else, meeting victims of gun violence, meeting people of different races, when it comes to voting and the rest, that always ends up changing opinions. And I think in a way, people like you and I, for the first part of our growing up, our experience in the seventies and you know late seventies, and in my case, which I can remember in the eighties. You know, it was a different time. Yeah. Where you saw, where I saw, you know, AIDS became, there was an AIDS outbreak. There was a huge amount of anti gay hysteria. Yeah. There were policemen wearing gloves before, when they touched gay people. There yeah. were all sorts of things to say, you are an other and you are different. And I just think that the, that the, those who are, you know, you know, the, the millennials and, and people since then have not had that experience that maybe Generation Xers like you and I, and I think overall we're still pretty fairly uh, in favor of gay marriage as a group, but but those that came after us just didn't see any of that crap to begin with, and culturally it's just been a whole different thing. I, you know, I, I, I actually cited uh, Will and Grace and uh, Ellen, uh, I think it was yesterday in talking about this, and, and I, think it, I, think it's, I think you're absolutely spot on about this. You know, for our generation, it was an issue. It was an issue, I think, in the main, our generation fell on the right side. But for the generation that followed us, I don't even think it's an issue. I think it's just sort of something like they're looking around and saying, like, you know, it's as if, like, uh, all of a sudden a city decided to start building all these pay phones. I think people would just be like, what, 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 why? And <laughs> That's exactly, I think it's a perfect metaphor. Yeah, and again, I'm not insulting our generation. I think we got it right in numbers show overall that Generation X probably was the first one that started moving in that direction. You know, you know, in that way, after the earlier experiences of seeing discrimination, most of us got with the program, so to speak. But I think, but I think millennials never even saw any of that. Never had to I, deal with the Anita Bryant's in the way, uh, having the power that she had. You know, uh, and, and some of these figures who speak out, uh, you know, in such anti-gay terms are just caricatures to them. Yeah, and, you know, it's fascinating you know, because I really do think, I mean, but, I, I, I have not seen the sort of, um, the uh, and maybe there's a book out there, but I, I, I have yet to see someone sort of, our generation was just sort of very weirdly placed in a lot of issues like that. It was a, you know, sort of a, a wretched time. Uh, when I look back on it from a political <laughs> standpoint of like, you know, people wanting to be PJ O'Rourke and uh, just just sort of a, a just a, a really nasty, nasty time where I think the sort well, of... The, it was sort of, the, yeah, PJ O'Rourke is part of this cool kind of countercultural conservatism. Yes. Call. And right? where it like was... They were the insurgents. That was the cool thing to be. I exactly. And this sort of like... We are, we are, we are, you know, so cool in counterculture that we're going to be a-holes and, uh, you know, uh, wave that flag proudly. And um, it, it's a, 
It, it is we particularly on this issue. We were on. Uh, we were our, our generation was at the fulcrum of it. Uh, you know, growing up, and, and you know, granted, I was growing up in Worcester, but which is not exactly a, a particularly cosmopolitan city. Um, uh, but uh, you know, it's not. Uh, it's, oh, come on, the nice restaurants. Well, the, the nice cool shops. I think there is a. I think there may have been a nice restaurant, uh, but it, you know, I was so oblivious to the uh, sort of the existence of gay people. I mean, I, uh, surely I must have known uh, some uh, uh, some people who were gay in high school, but it was just not. It was it was still like um, shrouded in mystery, and like you know, the only movies that you would see were like cruising, uh, you know, like uh, where uh, it, there was this sort of right. um, uh, or cartoonish uh, sort of um, you know, in, in terms of like uh, uh, the the what, what, what I can't even remember the name of that band now. The, they sang YMCA. Uh, oh, uh, the Village People. The Village, yeah, yeah the Village People, which was. Sort of just sort of this like so uh, so you're know, like this is seeped up from the counterculture and I, I don't know it, you know the the, the closest the- I think Sam I mean I remember my experience in high school and college and the way I would look at it and you know when I was at places that sort of were filled with people that were mostly socially liberal you know and yet still it was that there was a tolerance and an acceptance but it was very different yes so, absolutely we're tolerant and acceptance and we accept their differences. But I was taught that people that were gay were different, you know, and I don't think that lesson was ever, you know, taught. He wasn't taught you need to be tolerant or accepting, you know, accepting that they're gay and they're different. It was that they're no different than you. Right. It seems I mean, to I be think what that, the next exactly. generation has done. Uh, it's 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 been it it's been a fascinating period in terms of what uh, and showing what what the difference of culture uh, makes. 